We're going to be taking a look on pages Access 60 and 61, which is entitled Add Fields to a Form. After watching this video, you should be able to add fields to a form, align controls, and resize controls. Now, adding and deleting fields in an existing form is a common activity. You can add or delete fields in a form in either Layout View, which we're currently looking at right now, or Design View using the field list. The field list lists the database tables and the fields that they contain. To add a field to a form, you drag it from the field list to the desired location on the form. To delete a field on a form, you click the field to select it and then press the delete key. Deleting a field from a form does not delete it from the underlying table or have any effect on the data contained in the field. You can toggle the field list on and off using the Add Existing Fields button, which is located on the Design tab, which is on the ribbon. In Step 1 on Page Access 60, it tells us that we want to click on the Design tab, which is on the ribbon. And that is the one that is shaded in purple, which is underneath our Form Layout Tools. Once we have that, we need to go over to our Tools group, and then we want to click on Add Existing Fields button. And once we have that, we have a listing of all the fields that we currently have in our form. But we want to click on the link that has, or that states on here, Show All Tables. And once we have that, it shows all the tables that is available that we can pull fields from. And of course, this is the field list. And of course, we notice that the field list is divided into sections. Now, the upper section that we have here uh, shows the tables currently used by the form. Now, our middle section that we have here shows directly related tables. And usually those are the ones that have the relationships that are tied to this table. And then finally, in our lower section that's on here, this shows other tables that we actually have located in the database that are not related to this table. Now, we also notice that we do have expand and collapse buttons to the left of the table name. So we see maybe for an example, sales, states, or tour categories of customers, they all have these little plus signs. In addition to tours, we have a little negative sign. And those are the expand and collapse buttons. Now, these allow us to expand, which is the plus signs. That allows us to show the fields within the table, or we can click on the minus signs, uh, which is the collapse button, and that allows us to hide them. Now, we want to add in a descriptions field, and this one is actually going to be located in the tours categories table. So in step two, we're going to be adding that in. And in step two, it tells us that we want to click on the expand button to the left of the tours category table. So we go to this middle section, and here's the tours categories. We click on the expand button, and we see there are two fields that are available. We have the category, and we have the description. It tells us then in step two that we want to drag the description field to the form. Once we have that, we just click, and we drag this over to the form. Once we have that, we notice it goes to the top of the form here. So we want to place our mouse pointer over top of the selected form, and we want to click and drag this new description text box and label, which they're both currently selected right now, to just below the price label. So we click and we just drag this down, and we're going to place it just below the price label. get it to where there's just a little bit of spacing there. You may have to move it around just a little bit just to get it to exactly where you would like to have it at. Once you have it in a location that looks good on there, we notice that when you add a new field to a form that we now have two controls that has been automatically created and usually two controls are created. The first control, which we see over here on the left, that is our label control. And then we also have uh, another control. And typically, the other control is a text box. But in this case, it looks like it's a combo box because we have our little down pointing arrow here. Now, the label contains the field name. And the text box displays the data in the field. Now, the tour categories table move from the middle to the top section of the field list. So we notice that the uh, 
tours category was in this middle section here, but it's now moved to the top section over here. Now you also want to align and size the new controls with the others already on the form. Because we notice that this is kind of over a little bit, they're touching, you know, they're not perfectly aligned up. So we want to make some changes to that. Now the form design view works well for alignment activities. So this is the proper view that we really want to be working in right now. So in step three, we take a look and it tells us that we want to right click uh, on there. So this is where we're going to be switching views from our layout view to our design view. So we want to switch views to our, because um, the layout view is a good uh, that's on there and we can move this, but really the design view is going to be our best view that's on here. So we're going to right click the tours entry form tab and notice that it has our three options here. We have our form view, layout view, and our design view. And in this case we're going to click on the design view. Now notice it looks a little bit different than what uh, we've been looking at before because now we notice that there is no data that's there. All of our data has disappeared. But it's still there. This is just allowing us to work with just uh, the controls that are there. Next what we have is that it tells us that we want to click on the description label. So we click on the description label and then it tells us that we want to press and hold our shift key and we then want to click on the price label. So we're clicking and selecting both of these items here. Then we want to release our shift key and then we're going to go up and we're going to press our arrange tab. So we're going up to our form design tools and we're clicking on the arrange tab. Once we have that we now want to click on the align button and that is in the sizing and ordering group. So we go to our sizing and ordering group which is on the right hand side and here is our align button. And when we click on this notice we have some options. We have to grid, left, right, top, and bottom. And in this case we want to align this to the left. And of course if you were spot on with your um, clicking and dragging of it down, it's probably not going to move much, which probably you notice if, in my case it didn't really move at all, but if I would take this and if I would drag this over a little bit and then if I would select this as well and then if I would go to align to the left, you'll notice that now it would align these controls perfectly up with the left. Now we want to go through and resize the labels. And in step four, it tells us that with these two labels still selected, we want to click on the size space button, which is directly to the left of the align button. And when we click on this, and this is once again in the sizing and ordering group, we want to click on two widest. And of course that is going to resize this up to the widest uh, label that's out there. And of course with the new controls now in position, we now want to enter in a new record. So we now have the price and the, the description mirroring each other on there. They're aligned to the left and now they're identical in the same size. So now what we're going to do is, is that since we want, not, we want to input in a new record, we cannot do that in the design view. We have to switch the view up now. And to do this, we're going to switch this to the form view. And that will allow us to edit and enter or del delete our data. And to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go to step five. And step five tells us we want to click on our home tab up on the ribbon. And then we're going to go to click on our view button. Now you can click on the bottom half of it and that's going to show you the three different views. Or in this case, you can actually just click on the top half of that, which will actually take you automatically to the form view. And when you click on the form view, that will t uh, automatically switch you there. And what we want to do is we want to click the new blank record button, and that's in the navigation bar on the bottom. And that is the one with the arrow pointing to the right and the little starburst or the little sunburst right there. And when we click on that, we have a brand new record here. Next, it tells us that we want to click the tour name text box. So we're going down to the second text box here. And then we want to enter a new record in the updated form. 
And the information that we want to input in is shown on figure C8, which is located on page axis 61. But I'm also going to type it on here, so you can just follow along if you would like to. And we're going to type in Shower Popcorn Days. So when we type in, we're going to type in S-C-H-A-L-L-E-R, Popcorn Days. Now, you can go through here, and this is one great thing about a form, you can actually hit your tab key, and that will take you down to the next field below it. Or, if you feel comfortable, you can just click below it. Now, one little thing is that your tour number may be a little bit different. Now, generally it should be 53, but if it's not, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Next, we do want to have our tour start date. You can use your calendar picker right here, which you can click on that and select a date or you can just type it in which we're just going to type this in as 7 3 of 2015. The next the duration is going to be 2 and I'm hitting my tab key to move to the next um, control. The city in this case is going to be Schaller. The state abbreviation is going to be IA and the category, in this case, I'm going to click on this down pointing arrow, and I'm going to choose where it says family. I could have typed in family, which as you see here, I can just type it in as well. You know, I can delete this out, and I can type it in, but it gives me a suggestion of family. And I can just hit my tab key, so you can just type in the first letter, and it gives you the suggestions uh, on there as well. For the price, we're just going to type in 500. And for the description on there... Um, we're going to leave this where it says family tours include weddings and of course we could click on this as well and see um, the different options that are there. Of course they're kind of cut off for us. We can't read all the information so we're going to make sure that we just leave this family tours uh, one selected on there. Note that when you select a value in the category combo box, which we did just a little bit earlier on there, the descriptions automatically updated. So if I would select that to adventure Notice that the adventure description has already been selected for us. If I would go back to family here, notice that the family has already been selected and updated for us. And the reason for that is this is due to the one-to-many relationship between the tour categories and the tours table in the relationships window. So once again, you're kind of seeing a little bit more in depth on why this is important to develop those relationships early on between your tables. Now, on page access 61, there's some terms that we need to become a little bit familiar with, and we're going to be utilizing these uh, throughout uh, the remaining parts of this chapter, and that is where we're going to be using the terms either bound controls versus unbound controls. And controls are either bound or unbound. Now, bound controls displays values from a field, such as a text box or a combo box. Now these boxes right here that we've been working with, they are bound controls because they display the data that comes from, that, uh, from those fields. Now however, there are also unbound control boxes as well. And those do not display data. Unbound controls describe data or enhance the appearance of the form. Now labels are the most common type of unbound control. But other types include lines, images, tabs, and command buttons. Now another way to distinguish bound from unbound controls is to observe the form as you move from record to record. Now notice as I was hitting my tab key it moved from one uh, control to the next control to the next control. And because bound controls display data, their contents change as you move through the records. Now displaying the entry in the field of the current record. Now, unbound controls such as labels and lines do not change as you move through the records of a form. So that is kind of a way that you can distinguish bound controls from unbound controls. So those are some terminology that you just need to become familiar with when working with forms. And that concludes the information that's on pages Access 60 and 61. And in our next video, we're going to be able to modify form controls.